It's Julian Love who calls us every Tuesday for the Shrieking Giants. Uh, Julian, welcome back to the show, buddy. How are you feeling today? Feeling good. How are you guys doing? Really well, man. Yeah, we're really good. Well. Congrats again. Another yep. win. Uh, I guess this one really comes down to the last play. What was the call? Defensive call. Obviously, you only rushed three and, and just backed up into, uh, to, I don't know, just not, it's kind of like a prevent. But you guys rallied to the ball and stopped it right at the goal line. What was the call? Take us through the last play of the game that obviously got you all the win down in Jacksonville. Yeah, so that is a completely situational call. It is, I guess, kind of like a prevent. Um but basically, with that situation, with the no timeouts they had, the time on the clock, um, they would have had to take a shot in the end zone. They didn't have time to get up and kind of run another play, no huddle, um, because we were just, you know, late on them. And so we were in a quarter package, which is like seven DBs on the field. Um, <laughs> it's awesome, uh, a lot, a lot of DB, a lot of speed. You got to have speed. Um, and then, yeah, three of us were kind of on the goal line. I was on the right side where they, where they ended up going. Um, and we had some man coverage and, Basically, you're defending that front line throw. Uh, they, that's a common throw nowadays, a uh, Panther play, they call it. Um, instead of like kind of putting it towards the back of the line, they're just trying to get it in play and let the guy like kind of lean forward. Um, so yeah, I was kind of driving on it. Baby Monroe was on the coverage. Uh, he fit it in there with Christian Kirk. Um, but we were, <laughs> we're stingy, uh, and you know, Xavier McKinney was coming over. And so yeah, we were in the, Stopping him, you know, at the one. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. I'm just watching it, and I mean, you, you, I don't, it's almost like you were going for the interception or the knockdown or whatever it is. Thank goodness Fabian was right behind you and and, and bowed him up and stopped him, and then the rally came, and you guys, you know, got a big victory. But again, you know, every week, Julian, we talk about the second half defense. You guys gave up a long drive, and is is catalyst by Trevor uh, ETN's whatever that was 40 yard run and then they scored a touchdown on that drive but after that you guys bowed up the difference in the second half has been so profound each and every week is this something you guys are taking pride in right you know is this yes they may have done x in the first half but we're changing we're stopping this in the second half yeah oh for sure I think uh we always feel good at halftime uh in the adjustments we make uh it's a double-edged sword though you know yeah. You, you have that pride, but you also have pride enough to be like, all right, let's figure it out in the first half, though. Um, let's kind of get that going. And this team, we knew, I mean, coach, uh, their head coach, uh, Doug Peterson, he is well known for his uh, ability to script uh, plays. And so his first first 15 of games are pretty elite. Right? They scheme up some different looks, um, stuff they've been going over all week that they know they're going to start off the game with, and they were successful in that against us. Um but then after that, once they started to actually call plays and all that stuff, I thought we were pretty pretty stingy on defense. No, you definitely were. The, after the touchdown on the opening drive, it was a field goal, then a fumble, then, then downs, a, tur- a turnover on downs, and then obviously the second half with the other touchdown, and then they didn't score again. So you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I'm told to Julian Love here. Uh, so, Julian, did you have enough Giant fans down there in Jacksonville? I mean, listen, I know Giant fans travel. I know some other fan bases travel. But I mean, Trevor Lawrence couldn't even hear things. Uh, there was, a, I mean, you're, you're, the Giant fans were were phenomenal. What did it sound like being in a different stadium and you guys just completely took it over? <laughs> yeah, it was uh, pretty exciting. Um, it was packed. I mean, the, the the Giants fans definitely came through for us. Um, we knew that there might be some t- some turnout, but we definitely didn't expect the the amount of turnout that it did. It felt like almost a home game for us. Um, with a chance and the, the excitement. And so, yeah, it was uh, it was really fun to see and really happy that the fans could be out there. Well, I can tell you, it, it's going to be the opposite of what you guys are staring at coming up this week with Seattle. Now, uh, we know Geno from the Jets. We know Geno from uh, his stint backing up Eli and then obviously getting that start out in Oakland uh, for Eli back in the day. When you look at – he's been around a long time. I haven't played a ton of football, but when you look at Geno on film, and I know you know him from just uh, even, maybe even his college highlights, whatever – what do you guys see in Geno Smith? What kind of problems is he bringing to the table for you guys? And really the entire Seattle offense. Yeah, so he's a quarterback who's been on the block. He's experienced. Um, he's an arm. He could scramble a lot of times. But he just, I think what, with him comes the poise and the uh, experience you get with a, a guy like um, that's been around, basically. Uh, and so that's what he's bringing. He's getting the uh, the ball in the player's hands and, they're doing a good job of balancing out their, their run and pass attack. And so I think that's why they've been successful. 
because they have some dynamic running backs right now. Yeah. And then off of that, once you start the run game going, that's when the pass game opens up. Yeah, Kenneth Walker has been a been a marvel as a as a rookie out of Michigan State. You know, Julian, it's it's gotten to the point now where the expectation has clearly been exceeded. How are you guys handling that? Right, because now it's not. Oh, the Giants are playing good, and, it's, and they're, 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 they fight. They win these tough games. Now it's the Giants are supposed to win these games. Forget what Vegas says. The Giants are supposed to win. How are you guys handling these new expectations by starting a season six and one? <laughs> I think you kind of hit it a little bit. It's kind of our mindset. Our mindset has always been this whole year. Like, right, forget what Vegas says. Like, they don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah. Uh, kind of what's in that building, and so it's kind of that chip on the shoulder mindset where, you know. We've been winning games, but what are we going to improve on? Like, we're far from where we want to go. A few games, you know, is, is good, especially early. Then you keep winning, and it sounds great, and it looks great. You know, but it's all in the past now, and we still have a lot ahead of us. Um, it's Like you said, it's, it's, a, it's a long season, and so you can't get ahead of ourselves, but that's our mindset. It's to keep that chip on our shoulder and really – know what we have in that building. Listen, I'll tell you, man, if if I'm on that defensive side of the ball and I see my quarterback who's usually very calm and very collected and very poised and, you know, just very, very almost vanilla, uh, and I see him start barking at guys, I, I love it. I, I love that <laughs> Daniel Jones showed that side of his personality. Have you guys seen that in practice or was that just something that was, wow, like, you're like, who was that guy? <laughs> I... <laughs> I know DJ very well. Uh, we're the same draft class. Uh, you know, I would consider him a good friend. Um, <laughs> but seeing that, I didn't see it when he was barking at somebody uh, during the game. So people were telling tell me about it uh, in the locker room, of course, everybody was talking about it. And just like <laughs> laughing, like, that's just so funny because you could tell it means a lot to him. Like, a guy who's been ridiculed, you know, all sorts of ways. Um, to just be as confident to be leading us the way he's leading us and to have a game that he did this weekend for us, I mean, that's just that's exciting. And so to see him barking just, just shows the passion that he has for the game. And, uh, yeah, he's not he's not letting anything slide, no matter if we have a leader or not. Yeah. Is, he, is he the leader? Is he the leader on the team? Who's the leader on the team? I would say I would say there's two. My main vocal leaders is one is DJ. I think he was our unanimous captain, uh, one of our unanimous captains ever voted. And on the defensive side of the ball, I would say Xavier McKinney. Yeah. You know, I think he's been very vocal this year. He's kind of um, uh, stepped up to be that vocal guy for us, um, for the team in general. He's always giving, like, the, the speeches or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, those two guys, I feel like, have really stepped up to be vocal. And everybody else, all yeah. the other captains are just, you know, they're showing their leadership. you got to play well to, to do well. Yeah, Xavier's great. He, when you had your concussion, you were out for the the week, but also for our, our hit, he came on and he was, he was fantastic. He's your green dot on the defensive side. So the green dots are the vocal leaders on both sides of the ball. But I want to take you back to Daniel. You mentioned you guys came in the same year and we know the discussion around him. Some people said, Oh, he's Danny Dimes. That's where he got his nickname from early in his career. And then, you know, this little bit of this, this tro that he hit, this nader that he hit that was way down there, and everybody said, get rid of him, he's not the guy. And now he's slowly climbed out of it, and he's, he feels like a different person. Um, and as a leader, he's taken on that role, and whether he has to do it with his legs or whether it's the decision-making, he's really transformed. Have you, You've seen that. How, how has it been to watch a colleague, a peer, um, same draft class type player, do that? You know it's exciting. It uh, definitely makes me proud. It makes you know me happy for him. Um, you know this league nowadays. I feel like, uh, as opposed to in the past, it's just it's so like you got to be the guy right now. And you know when DJ first came in the league, he I mean, he needed to learn some hard lessons that we all needed to learn. Uh, I didn't know I I did, and uh, he's taking him in stride. And so he's he's been the leader for us. He's been playing so well for us right now. Because of all of the growth and all the experience that he's had to had to manage these past few years, and so you know, I'm ex- extremely happy. I know we're all super proud to have him leading us, kind of guiding us, um, and really running the offense. I mean, it, it, I mean, this year alone shows you kind of what he is as a person and as a leader. With all the guys banged up, you know, different names kind of being in and out on the offense, and for him to still be consistent and leading that 
offense through a tough playbook, I mean, I, I just kudos to, to him for all that he's had to do. It's good to see, man. Listen, keep the train moving. Good luck on the uh, on the trip out to Seattle. We'll catch you next week. Thanks a lot, Julian. Thank hey, you. Appreciate, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah, good, man, man. No doubt. <laughs> 